In this video, we're going to show you how to connect the camera to a server and stream video live over the internet. The camera has the ability to send RTMP streaming protocol. That means it can connect to YouTube Live, it can connect to Facebook Live, it can connect to basically any number of servers. Just make sure that whatever streaming service you're using, you know, you have to have an account with them. You have to have a YouTube account or a Facebook account and it has to be enabled for streaming. But whatever service you're using, make sure it uses RTMP protocol, and then you can stream to it from your CX350. I'll show you how to do that. There are two different ways you can connect to a network. We got to connect to a network one way or the other. One way is through the Ethernet port. This is a no cost option if you have access to your router in your house or your office or wherever you're at. If you have a direct cable connection to your network router, plug in that cable. If you don't have direct connection or if you're in the field and Maybe you're trying to stream live news and, and you're, you set your phone up as a hotspot. You can connect the camera to the phone using the optional AJWM50 Wi-Fi adapter. This device, you have to buy it separately. It doesn't come with a camera, but if you have one and you plug it in, then the camera can generate a signal and connect directly to a Wi-Fi enabled device. But in any case, we need to connect to the network and we need to choose an appropriate format that will allow us to do streaming. So first things first, let's go choose an appropriate format. Appropriate format means a 1080 format. Cannot be UHD, doesn't support UHD streaming. So that really means we gotta go to the file format and choose, I would just say to choose move straight off the bat. You have more choices than move. And then choose a rec format, one of the 1080 formats. For streaming video, I don't think 1080i is a great choice, so let's stick with 1080p. Then we go to the network menu, and we have to choose device cell, and choose whether you're doing LAN, which is an Ethernet local area network, if we're going to use the Ethernet port, the cable, or WLAN. If you have the adapter, you can use WLAN. So choose one of those, and go to network function, choose streaming. Let's look at IP remote and make sure that's set to disable. IP remote is only used when you're connecting for a remote controller. You're connecting a tablet or a phone and you're using the CXROP app. That's not what we're doing here, so we have to make sure that's disabled. And there's a streaming menu, but we're not going to bother going in there yet because first things we have to do is we have to connect to the network. If you're doing an Ethernet connection, go into the LAN property menu. IPv4 setting, and I recommend making sure that DHCP is set to client. And that should work. You should be able to plug an Ethernet cable in, plug it directly into your router, and with DHCP, the network should connect, and you should see a network connect icon when you exit out of the menu. If you're using wireless connection, a little bit more complex, but not much, go back into the network menu. When device cell is set to WLAN, we can go down to WLAN property. Now here we have to choose how we're connecting to the Wi-Fi network. You want to choose infra select under the type. Then we go to the SSID field to look for your network. And this is just like, you know, when you're using your phone or your tablet and you're looking for an available Wi-Fi network to join. It's the exact same thing. It'll bring up a list of the available networks. Choose your particular network that you're going to be joining. The other menu items should work for most people if they don't. You know, you're going to have to do some sleuthing there to, to make it work. But I'm giving you the simple operation that should work in most circumstances. Go down to the encrypt key and enter the password for that network. And the last thing we're going to do, go down to IPv4 setting and make sure that DHCP is set to client. Should be, but just make sure it is. When you've done all that, if you exit out of the menus, you'll see there's a Wi-Fi network, which should show that it's able to connect to that network. You should be connected to that Wi-Fi network at this point. Now let's go back in to the streaming menu. The streaming format, you're going to choose the streaming format. That will change based on what recording format you chose. You know, it's 24p or, or 30p or 60p or whatever. You've got frame sizes ranging as small as 320 by 180 all the way up to 1920 by 1080 at various bit rates. The bigger frame size, the higher number, the better quality video that's going to be transmitted. But 
the harder it's going to be for that network to handle that traffic. So you got to make sure your network's pretty quick if you want to go using the 24 megabit version. It should be, but you know, if you're out in the field and you're using the hotspot off your tablet and you're relying on a 3G or LTE connection, maybe all you can handle is like a half a megabit or one megabit. So choose a streaming format that works and supports the network that you're on. So now we can choose how we want to trigger that streaming. You go up to the start trigger menu. You can choose the camera or the receiver. The receiver is the web address that you're streaming to. So in our example here for YouTube, it would be, you know, YouTube, you tell the camera to start streaming. Well, that's not really what you want to do. You want to control when the streaming happens and, and stops. So set it to camera. Then we're going to go to connection info. This is how we're going to store the URL, the universal resource locator, the web address of where our streaming server is. So you have to go to your streaming server and figure out what your URL is. Usually, like for example, in YouTube Live, you're going to see a URL and also a stream key. Both of those need to be put together. The long URL and then take the stream key and copy that and paste it at the end and that gives you your real true url address that's what we need to know so that url address we can either enter it into memory or we can copy it from an sd card get in the sd card in a minute let's do it the hard way first so we'll set that to memory then you go into the receiver url menu and here you type in that address, the whole HTTP everything <laughs> that it shows, including the incredibly long stream key afterwards. Type that entire thing in and click OK. Once you got that input, you're ready to start streaming. Now, this all presumes that you have an account with the service and that it's enabled for streaming and you've got to go to your service provider, YouTube or Facebook or whoever, and see that they give you the option to stream but if they do there should be a url url plus stream key most likely that you can then input and when you're connected to that the camera is able to start streaming and down at the bottom of the menu you'll see start and trigger streaming on or off when you press start you should see a streaming network happening you should see video appearing on youtube at that point you can also assign the streaming start and stop to a user button. I find it very handy to put it on slot cell five. So if I'm in the field and doing a live event and I want to be able to start and stop easily, that's, that's just a great use for it. Now, having done this a few times, I can tell you the, the area that seems the most challenging is getting that URL in there together with the stream key error free, making sure you get the capitalization all right and all the dashes where they belong. Uh, it's a little bit of an effort to do that. Once you get it done properly, you can save that URL to an SD card. That way you'll never have to do it again. In my experience, at least with YouTube, the URL and the streaming key don't change. Those are fixed, set to your account. So if it's not going to change, you should never have to re-enter that again. Save that URL on an SD card. And next time, instead of saying the connection info memory, we can say connection info SD card and then you can load the SD card information directly into the camera. Now, another way you can do this, if you want to go through the extra step first and save yourself some effort, you can use the P2 network setting software. This is a free download from Panasonic's website. And while this utility is not really made for this camera, there is one particular aspect of it that is very useful. That's the RTMP tab. In that RTMP tab, you can copy and paste direct from your streaming server. You know, go to Facebook Live and get your entire long URL, copy that and paste the URL and the stream key, or you know, for YouTube, it has the URL and stream key, copy those and paste those into this utility and then tell it to export that as an SD card. And it will save the file on the SD card. It's kind of in a hidden directory. We'll put on the screen here for you, the p2stream.cnf. But once that's saved, then you can come to the camera and directly load that in off the SD card, making things so much easier. Well, hopefully that'll get you up and streaming. Hopefully we demystified the process and made it simpler for you. If you want more information on the CX350 and how to use it, and the various features and some step-by-step -step guides on how to get those functions to work, first of all, stay tuned to this channel because we have 10 videos in total on the CX350 describing these functions. 
And the other thing you can do is you can download the guide to the CX350. This is a free book that Panasonic makes available to you. I wrote it's over 200 pages and it's basically everything I could figure out about the CX350 all combined into one big tome. So I hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching. Panasonic.